In a training session several days ago with a level one thermographer, we discussed the undervalued aspect of thermal reflectivity and emissivity when shooting a thermographic image. This image was taken while I was a principal investigator at San Diego State University College of Sciences and illustrates the fact that every physical body that is not a perfect black body will reflect thermal energy in obedience to the laws of reflection, that is the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence, and the laws relating to emissivity and its reciprocal reflectivity. Before you go looking for the perfect black body, there are none, they are only theoretic in nature. For identification, identification purposes, what you're looking at is a thermal desalination device made up of 316L stainless steel and so has an emissivity of about 0 0.0085. Its temperature during this uh, picture was uh, about 98 degrees Celsius. My temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, of course. Clearly, you can see my reflection, but why? And why do I look hotter rather than cooler than the device, which is clearly hotter? Walk up and touch it, and you'll find out just how much hotter. To simplify this, let's consider the emissivity to be a little bit higher. Let's say 0.01, or 1% 1 of the thermal energy conducting to the surface is emitted from the surface. Conversely, 99% of the thermal energy reaching the surface does not penetrate the surface. Well, from the inside, of course, it just stays in and conducts away. But consider my reflection. From the outside, this reflects, this 99%. Now, consider those same numbers again. Uh, it, I've just alluded to that. But if the energy striking the surface is 1% of it is absorbed because the emissivity is the same as absorptivity. It's just the opposite direction. That's why I alluded to it a second ago. So if the emissivity at a given frequency at a given temperature is 1% or, or 0 0.01, that is 1% of the energy that comes to its surface, conducts to its surface, is emitted from the surface, then uh, the, the absorptivity is also 1% at that same frequency of light at the same wavelength or same temperature. Okay, So in this case, it's, let's say it's 1 and 99% is reflected. Now it makes sense why my cooler body looks hotter because only 1% of the energy coming out of the machine is being emitted and 99% of my infrared light hitting the surface is reflected back to the camera. You can even see the camera in the image. You can see my glasses in the image. Now, let's only add one item. In, in my profile area, that same 1% from the machine is also being emitted. My light striking, it doesn't prevent that light from being emitted, right? So, uh, I'm 99% of what you're seeing in my profile area is my reflection, and 1% about is the reflection, or is the uh, emission from the machine. I took this photograph deliberately, and you'll need to forgive the fact that it's of lower resolution than a bit grainy. The camera is a bit older, and the uh, is a number of years back, and the newer, higher resolution images uh, are, are better. But uh, this one pixelates on a, a bit when I when I made it the size for this presentation. Now I could have stepped out of the image. Matter of fact, most of the images I took, I wasn't in them like this. But uh, then, what would you see? just the energy coming from the device? No, not at all. The surface condition of the device didn't change because I stepped out of the way. Of course not. That wouldn't change. It's still reflecting 99% of the background radiation, but what is it? Well, in this case, the background ra radiation is a large cement wall. It was uh, kind of mid-morning. It was in the shade. It had been all night. The wall was, let's say, uh, uh, 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, you know, is a, a nice day, but uh, uh, so, but, but that's what's reflecting from the background of the other areas around my profile area. Um, okay, so uh, in this case, we see the background all around my image again. So uh, something is always being reflected, and that's the point. But what is it, and how does it affect any temperature measurements that you may need to take? If there's no reflection at all, 
then the imager can rightly calculate the temperature using the Stefan Boltzmann equation, Wien's law, and Planck's curves. That's how it normally does it, right? How much of what frequency is being emitted, and what's the peak radiation? But that isn't the case because the distribution of light reaching the thermal imager is not from one source but from two. And in this case, the temperature difference difference would be huge. Remember, using Planck's curves for calculating temperature and considering uh, in these two cases the difference between my body temperature at at 310.15 degrees Kelvin and the device itself being imaged at only 361.15 let's say uh, if, we were that, if they were that accurate uh, de degrees uh, Kelvin then consider the emissivity the shift in calculated temperature is very much in favor of my body temperature, not the temperature of the device. I'm not measuring that correctly at all. Now consider a human reflection off a small metal connector, the electric device it's, that you're inspecting. Several issues arrive. One, there is not a apparent problem, let's say in one case there's not an apparent problem uh, it doesn't look like a problem. Everything is apparent temperature because you're looking at it, right? It's, it's, you're not measuring it directly. You're, you're calculating it. You're, uh, you're looking at it. It's an apparent problem because you see it. Okay, so the apparent problem isn't there at all until your reflection is encountered. And so you report an issue that isn't there at all. You've measured your own temperature reflecting off of the device. Okay, or two, there's a small problem there, but you've added thermal energy to it and so overrated it two similar problems there. In that case, you're kind of fixing something that doesn't need to be fixed or rushing to fix something that didn't necessarily need to be fixed right then, but needed to be. Okay, no harm, no foul there, except you've wasted some time. But there's a third scenario. There's a critical problem there, and you missed it because you set the emissivity at 0.98 and ignored the reflected energy. You couldn't see the problem at all. You weren't reflected in it because, uh, and uh, you had the wrong emissivity setting. So the cold background radiation that was being reflected off of it lowered it so there was no apparent problem. Oops. Now, you did see the problem, but when you calculated the temperature, you gave a lower assessment because you didn't understand most of the energy you were seeing was not from the overheated connection, which is quite hot. Rather, it came from the cool wall reflecting off the connector. Finding the correct background temperature and the cr setting the correct emissivity on the camera will make a very large difference in the assessment criteria you determine for the problems that you identify with a thermal imaging device. To say otherwise is to ignore the basic science dealing with the properties of matter. Remember this image representing every image that you see in a thermal imaging device made up of the image in the viewfinder and the thermal image reflected from the background off the subject you are imaging.